Hello everybody, and welcome back to more Magic the Gathering lore. Today, I want to go over the storyline of the 36th expansion to Magic. That of course, being the original Ravnica City of Guilds. The original Ravnica block came out around the time I was turning 15 years old, so this is when I was really starting to play Magic. I was still quite a novice player, but the flavor of this block really drew me into the game. I was a huge fan of the dual color pairings in the form of guilds, it really drew me into the game and allowed me to identify with the characteristics of my favorite guilds. It turned me into a fanboy of the game for sure, and that's why I'm featuring Ravnica in this episode of Expanding Lore. The Plain of Ravnica, a world which is dictated by its most recognizable landmark, the giant city which gives this plane its name. The city of Ravnica is a vast, sprawling metropolis which covers the majority of the plain, leaving little land on the outskirts for natural world to grow. The architecture of Ravnica is truly beautiful. Giant gothic towers peek through the clouds in the sky, while mazes of alleyways are used below as passageways for the countless of Ravnica's citizens. Grandly decorated halls stand at the focal points within the city, channeling followers to their locations, while the lower levels of Ravnica's sewers serve as cherished sanctuaries for the city's less desirable populations. Within the limits of Ravnica, like any metropolis, there is an ongoing political struggle taking place. Each party vies for control over the city, engaging in whatever tactics are necessary to gain power and influence over the other parties. These groups are known as the Guilds of Ravnica, giving credence to Ravnica's nickname as the City of Guilds. These guilds, ten of them in total, are fundamentally different in both ideology and practice. Many guilds have formed alliances throughout the ages, but in the end, each guild is out for their own interests. Ten thousand years in Ravnica's past, the tension between the guilds reached a tipping point and all-out war seemed inevitable. Not only was this conflict likely to destroy their plane, but many undead spirits had stopped passing over into the next life, causing even more trouble for the city. With the brutal and bloody fighting seemingly endless, the Perons of the guilds decided that the war needed to come to an end. The Perons are ancient beings who either formed or helped in the formation of the guilds far in Ravnica's history. The Perons put their power into an ancient contract, which became known as the Guild Pact. The Guild Pact is not just a treaty for peace, but rather it is a magical artifact which binds all of the guilds to its word. The Guild Pact served not just as a peace treaty, but it also gave each of the ten guilds a responsibility to uphold in order to keep Ravnica running. Think of it as different departments that you would find in any type of government. The Guild Pact made it physically impossible for the guilds to rage battles between each other, although it did nothing to change their opinion of the opposing guilds. The Perons of Ravnica's guilds, which would go on to be each of the guild's original leaders, included Azor the First, a powerful law mage who believed in order and the structure of law. He was one of the first leaders to suggest the Guild Pact's formation and was the author of most of the writing found in the original Guild Pact. He formed the Azurius Senate, which serves as Ravnica's lawmakers, courts, and judges. Razia is an archangel which wields a sword encompassed by holy fire. She is a symbol of justice hope, and meaning to those who follow her. She is the founder of the Boros Legion. The Boros Legion is charged with maintaining peace on Ravnica, acting as its police force and the enforcer of its laws. Rakdos, a demon and leader to a cult of zealous worshippers. He is a selfish being who cares only for himself. To Rakdos, personal pleasure comes before any type of honor or allegiance. He and his cult symbolizes pain, suffering, and chaos, causing untold amounts of problems for all the other guilds on Ravnica. This demon and his cult hold no purpose in Ravnica, and other guilds include them simply to bind them to something bigger than any single guild, and, perhaps, to distract Rectos from causing any more disruptions. Niv Mizzet, the dragon genius, is one of Ravnica's oldest residents. Being at least 15,000 years old, his genius has no limits and he is directly responsible for many influential inventions which are used throughout Ravnica. This powerful dragon formed the Izzet League, 
a group of Ravnica's brightest minds and finest inventors, charged with providing the city with new technology to improve the lives of its citizens. Though, some experiments end with destructive results. Slogthir was once an elf who had an affinity for necromancy. He worked tirelessly to form an army of undead until he himself took the form of a powerful lich lord. Using a body he created out of various parts of his opponents, he and his raised army fought for chaos but was drawn into the guild pact in an attempt to secure his position as a leader of the guild, the Golgari Swarm. Svogthir could not hold on to his position as the guild leader for very long though. He was overthrown by the combined efforts of five Gorgon sisters. Although he was able to kill off two of the Gorgons, the three remaining sisters managed to kill the Lich and gain control of the Golgari Swarm. They went on to rule the guild as the Sisters of Stone Death. The Golgari believe that death is the most important cycle found in life. So with that, they serve Ravnica by processing the dead found in the city into useful materials. Kisarzim, the Lord of Chaos, was the original leader of the Gruul clans found on the outskirts of the city. Kizarzim later bore the Cyclops Bor Borgmos, whose strength was only matched by his ferocity. The Gruul formed to protect those who lived outside of the comforts of the city limit, but as Ravnica grew, the Gruul's territory diminished. They hate civilization, but their Cyclops leader entered the Guild Pact under the oath that no more expansion would take place. The Gruul clan now serves as Ravnica's protectors of nature found outside of the city's walls. Matt Selesnia an elemental formed from the union of several dryads, is the living embodiment of nature. She believes that natural life is the only life worth protecting, and in that, she has formed a huge following of naturalistic worshippers. Matt Selesnia took on to the guild pack in order to protect her followers, and more importantly, protect the endangered natural life found within the city of Ravnica. She formed the Selesnian Conclave, which was charged with just that purpose. The Conclave's ultimate leader is Matt Selesnia, but she placed others to lead the guild through its daily activities. The Selesnian guild was run by the Chorus of the Conclave, a group of ancient dryads. Samir was the original founder of the Simic Combine, a group of intellectuals who looked to use science and biology to improve the lives and health of all lifeforms on Ravnica. Samir signed into the guild pack to help provide the entire city with medicines and biomancy, but later, died from an unknown cause. The succeeding guildmaster, Momir Vig, changed the philosophy of the Simic Combine. They no longer sought to help the lifeforms on Ravnica, but rather to improve upon them. They are a mad group of bioengineers who play god and don't always have control over the monsters they create. The Ghost Council of Orzova, otherwise known as the Obsidat, are a collection of spirits who rule over the Church of Orzova. This religion is the primary faith of many who live in Ravnica, and while the members of the Obsidat have changed many times over the years, their goal has not. The Obsidat Council signed the Orzov Syndicate into the Guild Pact and served as Ravnica's chief religious organization. Yet in reality, the Guild was nothing more than a business operation which only cared about money and power. The ghosts who ruled were the greediest beings on Ravnica, making a business out of faith. They are involved in almost every deal made in Ravnica, and if someone owes the Syndicate money, not even death can halt their payments. And lastly, Zadig, an ancient being and last in the line of psychic vampires. Zadig is a master manipulator and powerful mage specializing in mind control and thought alteration. He is a skilled spy and gatherer of information which leads credence to his nickname, the Lord of Secrets. He runs a secret guild known as House Demir, an order which employs the use of spies and assassins who traffic in secrets and blackmail powerful members of other guilds. Although many in Ravnica do not believe this guild still exists due to their secrecy, they were signed into the guild pact for no other reason than to join into the larger scheme of Ravnica. Zadik proposed the guild pact and managed to persuade the other, more chaotic guilds into signing it as well although it was later discovered that this was just another move made in a game of chess which the vampire was playing against Ravnica, everything Zadig does serves him and him alone. With all ten guilds putting their power into the guild pack, an uneasy truce fell upon the city. The world and the guilds went on to evolve from that point on, 
with each of the guilds specializing in two different types of mana. This gave every guild very separate and distinct ideals. This truce lasted for 10,000 years, but everything changed on the eve of the guild pack's decamillennial celebration. A few years before the monumental celebration, an officer of the Boros Legion named Argos Koss discovered a sinister plot which sought to break the guild pack. Agras found that the long-forgotten leader of House Demir, Zadik, was scheming to disrupt the Guild Pact and rule all of Ravnica in the ensuing chaos. Zadik, being one of the original founders of the Guild Pact, knew of a paradox that existed which would render the magic of the contract void. His plans took over 10,000 years to formulate, but now he was ready to fulfill this paradox and take control over the city. Zadik manipulated an elf named Savra into seizing control over the Golgari Swarm. To accomplish this goal, Savra found that the current leaders of the guild, the Sisters of Stone Death, had not killed the Golgari's original founder, Svagthir, but merely trapped him within a tomb. Savra discovered the location of this tomb and freed the Lich Lord. Together, they found the three Gorgon Sisters and a battle ensued. Svagthir managed to finish off two more of the Gorgons, but one managed to escape. Feeling pleased in his victory, the Lich let his guard down. Savra then betrayed the Paran of the Golgari Swarm, striking his indestructible head and banishing him to the Golgari Guildhall. Savra was now the rightful guild leader of the Golgari Swarm. Zadig then needed Savra to befriend the Selesnian Guild in order for her to gain access to their ancient leader, Matt Selesnia. This was not an easy task, however. Years of distrust did not shy away instantly. But eventually, a loose alliance formed between the Golgari and Selesnians, and Savra took the opportunity to strike. While all of this was going on, the Boros Legion officer Argus Koss was hot on their tracks. He found evidence which led him to the Selesnian Guildhall, there he found the target of his investigation. Zadik had gained access to the Selesnian guild leader through the efforts of Savar, and when Argus stepped into the scene, he found the ancient vampire feeding on the life force of Matt Selesnia. Without hesitation, Agra steps in and stops Sadiq from killing the Selesnian guild leader. Matt Selesnia survived the attack and went into hiding to recover from her injuries. Sadiq was placed under arrest for his attempts to break the guild pack, and it looked as if the day had been saved. But, Sadiq was more clever than Agra gave him credit. Sadiq intentionally left breadcrumbs for the Boros officer to follow. Agra was in fact a crucial part of his plot. Zadik understood the guild pact inside and out. He realized that each of the guilds served a purpose when signing it, even if at first it doesn't appear obvious. The guild pact's strength lied in its power of opposition, with each guild acting as a balancing power for another. Even the destructive Rakdos cult needed to be included because it served as an opposition to the Azorius Senate. This was the same for House Demir. The Demir guild had no other purpose other than to oppose the guild pact itself. So when Zadik attempted to break the guild pact by killing the leader of the Selesnians, he was in fact fulfilling his guild's original purpose. But when Agras Kas stopped him that fateful night of the 10,000 year anniversary of the guild pact signing, he disrupted another guild in its sworn duty, thus shattering the magic which bound the guilds together. A shudder befell the city, as each guild could sense that the pact had been broken. Once sideline plots of schemes and domination were now beginning to reappear, Sadiq used the confusion to escape the custody of Agras. Agras Kos found an ally in the Orzov Syndicate Baron and Guild Champion, Tessa Karlov, and together they worked to put an end to many of the schemes which threatened the whole of Ravnica. Karlov and the rest of the Orzov wanted to ensure that their trade connections and businesses kept the gold flowing, and a global war was sure to cut some gold lines. Meanwhile, the Simic Guild leader, Momor Vig, teamed up with the ousted Golgari Paran Svagthir to formulate their own plan to gain control over Ravnica. The Simic Guild had already released several giant Nephilim to attack the city and the other guilds. These giant monsters caused untold destruction, but faced opposition from the Izzet dragon Nizmizet. The draconic leader of the Izzet League took to the battlefield to defend his great guild hall from the trampling Nephilim. He managed to kill a number of the great beasts, but he was eventually injured. Unable to admit that he was hurt, the dragon stated that he was bored with the battle and flew off to recover from his injuries. When the Nephilim failed, Mormar Vig and Svagthir worked together to finish the Simic Guild's grandest experiment, 
Project Kraj. This monster, which had complete control over its evolution, took to the battlefield and was immediately contested by another formidable being, the demon lord Rakdos. Rakdos, leader of the Rakdos cult, awoke from his ancient slumber when he sensed that the guild pact had been broken. He took the opportunity to spread some much needed chaos across Ravnica. But the demon soon encountered the experiment Kraj, and they began to battle. During this fight, Momar Vig was confronted by Agras Kas. Agras was forced to kill the Simic guild leader when he refused to call off his perfect creation. The two giant beings were evenly matched as the fight raged on. Both Rakdos and Project Kal fell in defeat. The epic confrontation caused the experiment Kraj to explode from within, while Rakdos fell back into his fiery pit deep beneath the streets of Ravnica. The resulting explosion of this clash utterly destroyed the Simic Guild Hall, leaving the Simic Combine in disarray. This resulted in the deaths of both the Golgari Guild leader Savra and its Puran, Svagthir. As Kos continued to investigate, he discovered something very untasteful. The Guild leader of the Azorius Senate, Augustin IV, had knew all about Zadik's plan and simply kept the information to himself. It was apparent that the Azorius leader was actively supporting Zadik's plan in order to completely rule Ravnica himself. Kos also discovered that the Demir leader Zadik had been injured and retreated to the spirit realm known as Agram. Agram was a world which appeared near the beginning of the guild's formations. It was a realm which laid on top of Ravnica and blanketed it like a cloud. It was there many of the dead resided in spirit form. Kos shared this information with his guild leader, the powerful angel Razia. Razia gathered up her forces of Boros angels and stormed Agram seeking to bring Zadik to justice. But Zadik was lying in wait for the forces to come for him. He had been building up power and used it to control the spirits of this realm, forming a spectral army. In the battle, Razia was slain along with many of her fellow angels. The airship which allowed them to enter Agram, named the Parhelion, fell through the sky back towards Ravnica. During this time, Agras Kos was slain in battle, but due to a contract he had made with the Azoria Senate, he continued to serve in the Spectral Realm. With his new Spectral form, Agras went to Agram and used a device known as a Grounder to capture the vampire Zadik once and for all. The Grounder forced the Demir Guild Leader to take on a Spectral form. No longer able to materialize, he was forever trapped by Agras. Everything came to a head when the airship Parhelion fell from the sky and struck the Azorius Guild Hall. With the building badly damaged, the guild leader Augustin IV stumbled onto the streets where he faced his ultimate judgment. Kos and his allies approached the disheveled guild leader who, in an attempt to save himself, grabbed the grounder device and freed the spirit of Zadik. Thinking that Zadik would turn and fight Kos, Augustin IV was shocked when the greedy vampire turned on him and drained him of his life essence. Augustin IV died and the large airship which had crashed into the Azorius Guild Hall exploded, completely destroying the hall. In the aftermath of all this, Zadik was banished to Agram and placed under the watch of Agras Kos, who was deemed the Warden of the Spectral Realm. The Angel Feather took over for the slain Boros Legion leader Razia, and the Orzhov champion Tessa Karlov drew up a new, non-magical guild pact. This new guild pact allowed for a new fragile stability to be reached between the guilds, Ravnica is a plane where struggle takes a very political form. The struggle isn't necessarily for survival or against some great beast, it's against your neighbors. So there you have it, the story behind the original Ravnica expansion. If you enjoyed watching this video, please like and subscribe, it helps out a great deal. And if you have a favorite plane, expansion, or planeswalker you want to know more about, let me know in the comments below. Thank you all for watching. And as always, I'll see you next time.